All right, so I want to do something different today. A lot of people have trouble with, you know, understanding what's the purpose of the OSI model and all that. Well, what I want to do is talk about why we utilize them and what they're for. Now, there's a ton of videos of explaining them, and it's easy to kind of remember once you do it. I've been doing it so long, you know, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. That's pretty much uh, easy to understand once you go through it. But what's the purposes of it? Well, one of the purposes is to have a standardization of, you know, communication models among the different corporations, organizations that create applications and hardware and all that stuff. So that's one reason. Another reason is for troubleshooting. Let's say a developer contact, let's, let's keep it simple. Say someone calls you at the help desk and says, hey, um, I'm not, I'm not able to get to this website. And you're like, okay, well, what happens when you go to it? And they say, well, I get um, a connection error. Well, cool. So you ask them to either go to a, another website or you try to ping their device by having them do an IP config to get their IP address. But that takes time. So the easiest thing to do is have them go to an internal site. Can they get to it? Yes or no? Okay, now have them go to google.com or cnn.com. Are they able to get to that? Because if they're working VPN, now the question is, if they're able to get to an internal site, okay, they're connected VPN, they should be able to access their internal site. But if they can't, but they're able to get to google.com, now they're not connected to the internal site. So there's an issue with their VPN connection. So you can troubleshoot it that way. Now, if they are connected internally, now there may be an issue with the site. So let's say the site has a secure version and an unsecure version. So they can get to the unsecure portion on port 80, but they can't get to the secure portion on 443. Now, troubleshooting this, can you get to both sides? And if you can get to both sides, then there's either an access list blocking it or there's something else going on in the network. And how do you do that? Okay, well, let's see if they're in active, the right active directory group. Is there a DNS problem with their system? All of this you learn by knowing the OSI model and understanding troubleshooting. I just wanted to make this quick video to talk about, you know, the purpose of the OSI model. Because I know a lot of times people teach you all these different layers. You know, the physical is going to be your, um, basically your end devices and, you know, your, your um, LAN cables, all of that stuff. The data link layer is pretty much going to be your NIC. You know, the network layer is going to be your IP address. You know, then you got your TCP ports and TCP UDP com communication on um, layer four. This is your session connections on, you know, layer five. And then layer six, layer seven, you know, your presentation and app application uh, layers. It's, 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 it's a lot to take in, but the more, you know, you get to the different layers and understand it, the better you prepare you'll be for when you get out into that workforce and, start troubleshooting for yourself i just want to make this quick video to kind of help y'all to understand the purpose of why you need to know it to help you be a rock star network engineer desktop support technician or whatever so yeah i'm about to get in here and get handle some business i'm gonna catch up with y'all later peace